بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد, محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعبان من سامح First I congratulate you for the birth anniversary of Imam al-Rida alayhi salam and I hope inshallah we can do his ziyara inshallah with ma'rifa and receive his shafa inshallah in the hereafter. We will inshallah talk about uh, Imam Raza alayhi salam few minutes and then continue our study of Tazkiratul Muttaqeen. There is a book by Shaykh Sadduq Ridwanullah Ta'ala Alay called Oyun Akhbar Rida Alayhi Salam. I will share with you the text. Uh, so as you see is called here Oyun Akhbar Rida. I make it bigger. Uh, in this edition is volume one page 13 you can find it in al maktaba to shi'iya shaykh sadduq has made the first chapter of this book about the reason why the eighth imam is called arrida because his name is Ali ibn Musa, yeah? Ali, the son of Musa, Musa ibn Ja'far This Ar-Ridha is a title. Why he was given this title? There are two hadiths in this chapter. The first hadith is from Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Abi Nasr al-Bazanti. A very well known narrator of hadith. He says, I told Imam Jawad alayhi salam, Qultu la Abi Ja'far Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Musa, Inna qawman min mukhalifikum yaz'umun abaka innama sammahu al-ma'mun ar-rida. لِمَا رَذِيَهُ لِبِلَايَةَ أَحْدِهِ He said, I told Imam Jawad السلام, that some of your مخالفين, some of your opponents, they think that your father was called Rida by Ma'mun, the Abbasid Caliph when he chose him to be his wali to be his prince he gave him this title meaning that he is a person that i am pleased with imam jawad alayhi salam said kadhabu allah wa fajaru by god they have told a lie this is a sinful statement. Balillah tabaraka wa ta'ala sammahu rida The truth is that Allah gave him this title. Why? لَأَنَّهُ كَانَ رِضًا لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فِي سَمَائِهِ وَرِضًا لِرَسُولِهِ وَالْأَئِمَّةِ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ صَلَوَاتُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِمْ فِي أَرْضِهِ Because he was pleasing to Allah in his heaven and to the messenger of Allah and imams after the messenger of Allah on the earth. So a title which is given to him by Allah 
and not because he was pleasing to Ma'amun, but because he was pleasing to Allah and the Messenger of Allah, Imam Amir al Mumin, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, etc. Bazanti is a knowledgeable person. He makes good question. Making good questions is very important. He said, I told Imam Jabal alayhi salam, Alam yakun kullu wahidin min abaika al-maadheen alayhim as-salam rizan lillahi ta'ala wal rasulihi wal a'imma. Isn't this a case about previous Imams? Imam Qadim alayhi salam was also pleasing to Allah, pleasing to the Prophet and Amir al-Mu'mineen, etc. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam the same, Imam Baghr alayhi salam the same. What is special about Imam Rida alayhi salam? Faqala bala. Imam said, yes, there is something extra. Now that Imam found him a person of understanding, gave him also something extra. Of course, the main thing is the first one, that it's pleasing to Allah and the messenger and Imams. But there is something extra. فَقُلْتُ فَلِمَا سُمِّيَ أَبُوكَ مِنْ بَيْنِهِمْ الرِّضَى When Imam said yes, he said, so then why he was called Rida? Imam said, لَأَنَّهُ رَضِيَ بِهِ الْمُخَالِفُونَ مِنْ أَعْدَائِهِ كَمَا رَضِيَ بِهِ الْمُوَافِقُونَ مِنْ أَوْلِيَائِهِ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ ذَلِكَ لِأَحَدٍ مِنْ آبَائِهِ because Imam Raza salam had something special, unique. With respect to Imam Raza, Allah was pleased, Rasulullah was pleased, Imams after Rasulullah were pleased. But his enemies, like Ma'mun, also was pleased with him. In what sense? In the sense that they had to accept him, they had to make him their wali ahd. And also, many other people who were not followers of Imam, they had to respect him. So he was a person that <coughs> was pleased with Allah, for sure. And then pleasing to Allah and the Messenger of Allah and Imams, number two. And even someone that his mukhalifun min a'da'i, those who disagreed with him from his enemies, also they had to be pleased with him. فَلِذَلِكَ سُمِّيًا مِنْ بَيْنِهِمْ الْرِضَى And this is why among all the imams, the eighth imam is called al-rida. There is a second hadith, there are only two hadith in this chapter. The second hadith is from Abdul Azim ibn Abdullah al Hassani, Hazrat Abdul Azim, from Suleiman ibn Hafs al Marwazi. Marwaz is someone who is from Marv. You know, Ma'amun moved capital to Marv in larger Khurasan at that time and called Imam Raza alayhi salam there. So, Suleyman ibn Hafs al-Marwazi says, Kana Musa ibn Ja'far, Ibn Muhammad ibn Ali ibn al-Husayn ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib. Means Imam Qadim alayhi salam. Kana yusammi valadahu aliyan ar-rida. Because this title was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Imam Qazim was mentioning his son Ali ibn Musa with this title, ar when he was referring to him. When he was addressing him, was different. If he was going to address Imam Raza, he was going to say, Ya Abu al-Hasan out of respect, you know, in Arabic, they call normally with Konya, nickname. 
But when he was referring to him as third party, he was saying Rida. So he says, Kana Musa ibn Ja'far. Up to the, uh, his ancestors are mentioned, up to Amir Huni. Yusammi waladahu aliyan al-Rida. Wa kana yaqul. For example, he used to say, Ud'u li waladi al-Rida. If he wanted to see Imam Rida, he was saying, for me, call my son Ar-Rida. Or, قُلْ تُ لِوَلَدِي Ar-Rida. I said to my son Ar-Rida. Or, قَالَ لِي وَلَدِي Ar-Rida. My son Reza told me. So he was using Ar-Rida. وَإِذَا خَاتَبَهُ قَالَ يَا أَبَا الْحَسَانِ when he was addressing him, he was saying, Ya Abu Hassan. So, why Imam Raza is called Ar Raza? According to these two hadiths that our great Mufassir and Muhaddith and one of the people that we owe to them a lot, Shaykh uh, Saduq has mentioned, he says, This was given to him by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it was important to the extent that Imam Qadim was using this to refer to Imam Rida alayhi salam and the reason behind it is that he was pleasing to Allah and the messenger of Allah Imam after him and also his enemies were pleased with him there is also something that we can find in Salawat that Imam Askari alayhi salam has taught us. I want to share that as well, inshallah. So, Imam Asker salam was asked by someone to teach him how to send salawat to the Ahlul Bayt. And actually he had pre present, you know, prepared with him a piece of paper and asked Imam to dictate. And Imam started dictating him salawat for the Prophet, for Amir al muminin for Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein up to Imam Rada and then continues up to Imam Askari himself. He waits he, because when he reaches himself, he doesn't say. Then he requests him, please continue. And Imam says, because I have to teach you ma'alim and teachings of religion, I teach you. Otherwise, you know, he didn't want to talk about himself. And then about Imam Zaman. So in the section about Imam Rada, it starts with this Allahumma salli ala Ali ibn Musa al-ladhi irtadaytahu when we do vast becomes al-ladhi irtadaytahu varadayta bihi man shi'ta min khalqik O oh Allah, please send salutations to Ali ibn Musa that you are pleased with Irtadaytahu. He is Murtada, he is Mardi, he is someone that Allah is pleased with. In the Quran we have Illa liman irtada in the discussion about Shafa'ah. La yashfa'oon illa liman irtaba. So, Ali ibn Musa is the one that irtadaytahu. Wa radayta bihi man shi'ta min khalqik. This is very special. It's Maybe not exclusive to Imam Raza alayhi salam, maybe. But 
in this salawat, this is mentioned only for Imam Raza salam. Perhaps there is something special in Imam Raza salam. He is the one with whom you please those that you will from your people. Sometimes we are talking about Allah being pleased with someone. Okay, that's great. Sometimes we talk about Allah trying to please someone. Yeah? For example, Allah says, Wala sawfa rabbuka fatarda. Allah says to the Prophet that He will give him great things or thing, which is shafa'a or including shafa'a. Fatarda, you will be pleased. When Allah gives, because when we receive something, we become happy, we become pleased. So, if Allah wants to please someone from his khalq, from his people, he needs channels, he needs uh, media, he needs something to be between him because he is uh, infinite and he has unlimited treasures and his sunnah is to use asbab although he can bypass everything but he normally uses a network channels if he wants to please someone he uses imam raza alayhi salam radayta bihi man shi'ta min khalqik perhaps this explains why imam raza is known as Ar-Ra'uf Ar-Rahim and this is understandable from a hadith that uh, many years ago I saw in Madinatul Ma'ajiz by Shaykh al Ra'amili when, that, when Imam Raza was born it was said Sayyadharullahu uh, Sayyudhirullahu Bihil Adla Wal Ra'fata Wal Rahma something like this I saw it many years ago I have to check it again but something in this in this line this is the person with whom Allah will make Ra'fa Justice Rahma prevail so we shouldn't be surprised if on the day of judgment we see that although all the Ahlul Bayt have similarities they have also different functions they have different roles given by Allah to each of them and maybe the role that is given to Imam Raza alayhi salam is to be an icon of uh, love of Allah, kindness of Allah, rahfa, affection and rahma, mercy of Allah, so that people would be pleased. So it would be great for opportunity for us to do ziyarah of Imam Raza from far or near to do tawassul, to send salutations and benefit from his help in getting what we want, especially if we want something for our spiritual journey, inshallah. Okay, this is about Imam Raza alayhi salam and last night in uh, Chelmsford in the UK I had a talk and I expanded on this and I also reflected on this ziyarah of Imam Raza uh, if someone is more interested they can refer to that lecture now we go to our text Tazkiratul Muttaqeen by late the late Ayatollah Bahari Hamedani from end of this letter we realize that he wrote it when he was in Kazamain. He was not in Najaf, he was in Kazamain. Maybe he had gone for Ziyara, uh, 
maybe he had to stay there for some reason near Baghdad because it seems that it has been uh, a way for you know that he is not happy that he's away from Najaf if it was just for one day maybe he would not say like this maybe for some reason maybe for Mu'al the treatment etc he had to go to Baghdad and cause him you know near Baghdad anyway inshallah we will see this letter is given to t uh, children of Malakut Tujjar Tabriz. Malakut Tujjar means the king of tradesmen. Tajir is tradesman. Tujjar is plural. So this person was a big businessman in Tabriz and Alhamdulillah in the past, still today, we have mashallah such people but in the past many times these were very religious people very nice people sometimes unfortunately uh, people who are you know becoming rich they are not very religious but in Iran and I think in many other countries sometimes we had some of the very religious people who were doing trade business for example, Tehran's central bazaar uh, was very religious atmosphere and they had biggest mosque and you know great ulama like Ayatollah Sayyid Ahmad Khunsari was you know leading the prayer there and they were great supporters of Imam Khomeini before revolution you know etc. Uh, so this person must be a religious person and his family were very religious but Ayatollah Bahari Hamidani is not pleased with them he doesn't want them just to say prayer and fast and you know give homes or etc he wants them to become very close to God very spiritual and it seems that he had such you know authority and such you know uh, uh, influence that he could easily talk to them and to other people you, you saw in the past also he is not very shy uh, the way he speaks it's not very common among ulama but some ulama speak like this uh, because they know that the other person is not going to be offended and they t want to have direct message so he says bismillah rahman rahim ikhwani my brothers so he starts with my brothers, but then he criticizes. Zahiran Hamon Asho Hamon Kasebude Boshahar. In Farsi, we use this, we say this is the same soup and the same bowl, meaning uh, situation has not changed, there is no improvement. When we want to say things have not improved, we, in Farsi, we say Hamon Asho Hamon Kaseh. As if every day from the same, uh, you know, container, they were giving him the same, you know, ash. Ash is a thick soup. Uh, I mean, the origin of this proverb. Then they use it to say things have not improved. So he says, Hamon ash or hamon kase, na kari, na fikri, na taqwa, na dars. You are not doing anything to improve. You are not doing tafakkur. Look at the significance of tafakkur. He says, you are not doing anything. You are not doing tafakkur. You have not invested on taqwa. You are not taking lessons. I don't know if they were uh, enrolled in a KLC. Ayatollah Bahari Hamidani would accept it from them or say it's not enough. KLC is just a little, you know, just a salt. Uh, you have to do more. Anyway, we have to think about this. At least, Alhamdulillah, we have KLC. Nadars, you are not studying. You know, to say this to business men, you know, maybe someone says, you know, businessmen should do business. But he says, no, every Muslim must study. Nadana mahazat tawani fi amr al akhirat wa takasul. 
I don't know why there is such weakness and laziness about the hereafter and obedience to the Ahlul Bayt that he calls them pure intellects. Ahlul Bayt were pure intellects. Hujjatullah as Zahira or Ahlul Bayt and uh, Prophet and Batan is Aql. And Nasi Tumul Maut, have you forgotten death? And the most of the letter is about death. I mentioned some of it, uh, I leave most of it for the next session. And Nasi Tumul Maut, have you forgotten death? الذي لا بد من which is inevitable والورود عليه everyone has to go towards death and experience death and death in one moment destroys أركان اللذائذكم the pillars of and foundations of your pleasures and destroys the foundation of your غراء your instincts and desires isn't this the case that remembrance of death should make us less interested in dunya? Muraqiban anil anid dunya. Raqiba fi means to be interested in. Raqiba an means not to be interested in. Muraqiban anil akhirah means make you less interested in dunya. Wajaliban al akhirah take you towards akhirah. If you remember death, it will take you away from dunya towards akhirah. Then he refers to the hadith from Ma'asum that whoever remembers death every 24 hours, every day and night, Ashreen Amarla, 20 times. If 20 times we remember death every day and night. In the Salat, if we say it with presence of heart, when we say Malik Yawmuddin, this is a remembrance of death if we really mean what we say. Hadith says, whoever remembers death in a matter of day and night, 24 hours, 20 times, Yuhsharu ma'a shu'ada'i Uhud. He or she will be resurrected with the martyrs of Uhud. Great promise, great ajr. So it means that remembrance of death is very helpful. Ama vajatum zikrahu fi ghayat naf'i wa ta'athir. Haven't you found remembrance of death to be of utmost benefit and has greatest impact? Why you are not remembering death? Maybe what's the obstacle, what doesn't let you to remember death is your heart is busy and engaged with something else. When the heart is busy with dunya, then would not remember akhirah. You are not prepared for journeying towards the hereafter. When you are not in the preparation process, you are not remembering death. Otherwise, how can someone who is on a journey, who is a traveler, forgets that he's traveling and he has to prepare? If you are not engaged with something that has occurred and you know preoccupied your heart, you should be thinking about your journey. Every traveler has to have as his main concern preparation of provision, etc., for journey. And it is interesting that these uh, children of Malak Malakut Tujar. They must have known Arabic. They were people who were 
you know, educated. They knew Arabic, you know, they understand these things, you know, so they were not, you know, people who were totally uh, stranger. فَمَنْ تَفَكَّرَ فِي حَالِ الْفَرَاغَةِ لَا بُدَّ مِنْ أَنْ يَقِلَّ سُرُورُهُ بِالدُّنْيَا وَالشَّهَوَاتِهَا وَهَانَ أَمَلُهُ وَانْكَسَرَ قَلْبُهُ عَنْ لَذَّاتَهَا This is the last sentence for today. Whoever thinks, when you have condition of فراغة, when you have some free time, think about death, about your journey, and then this would cause that your excitement about dunya and shahawat of dunya would be reduced. Your unrealistic desires and dreams about dunya would be lowered. And your heart would be detached from pleasures of dunya. Then he continues and he mentions different conditions that people have with respect to akhirah inshallah we'll talk in the next session alhamdulillah rabbil alameen